just believe in yourself love yourself mm -hmm. don't let the society dictate what happens in your life mm -hmm. because by the end of the day it's your life mm -hmm. and not the society's life mm -hmm. it life is beautiful with or without kids you can be happy Hello, welcome to Tuko Talks. My name is Lynn Gogi. Now, my guest today is kind, reserved, and dreams of having children. Not only will her story inspire you, but it will make you appreciate everything you have in life. So without much further ado, allow me to let her introduce herself. Hello. Hi. Hi, how oh, are you? I'm fine, thank you. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Julian Peter, 29 years of age. Yes. And, um, I was born with a condition yes. called MRKH. Mm -hmm. uh, MRKH basically means that uh, uh, I'm born without the uterus. Yes. I am also born without uh, the cervix. Mm -hmm. I'm born without the vagina. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a condition whereby you have emotions every single day and also the society takes you differently because of the situations. Mm -hmm. They also think it is not that you are born with it or maybe you caused the condition okay. yeah or it can also go to the parents they are also blamed either people think you're bewitched or not others think that say, maybe you did so many abortions and that's why your uterus was removed yes and not everybody believes that it's a condition really yeah and god i must first i must commend you for mm -hmm. coming out and you mm -hmm. know speaking about mm -hmm. your story because i know there are a lot of people who have the same condition yeah, sure. but you know they are scared because mm -hmm. as you said earlier mm -hmm. of what the society yeah. will say yeah. about them yeah? yeah so at what age did mm -hmm. you discover you had this condition okay i discovered at the age of 17 yeah i was in form three by then okay yeah you were in form three yeah so how did it come about okay um uh when i found out first of all i went to the hospital mm -hmm. not because i was going for the reproductive elder checkup okay. but i was going for checkup for my aching feet mm -hmm. and um, when i went to the hospital the doctor just generally always they will always ask when was your last period yeah so it was like hey i've not seen them yet mm -hmm. okay so the doctor decided that i should go for a checkup now for the reproductive health mm -hmm. uh, not even for the reproductive health. they was checking why i have not yet had my periods so they requested for a scan so i went for the first scan and uh, unfortunately the first scan said that um, um my reproductive system is okay so they they checked my vagina opening yeah. ama, ama the vaginal canal mm -hmm. and when they checked the vaginal canal they said it was closed from the outside wow. so i they decided that i should go for a surgery mm -hmm. to open the vaginal canal mm -hmm. so i went for the surgery and uh, when i went for the surgery mm -hmm. i guess the doctor saw that there was nothing he can do mm -hmm. and there's no way that he can create the vagina because after the surgery three days later i went for the for the second scan mm -hmm. so the second scan said that uh, i don't have now the reproductive organs wow. yeah okay yeah. and i can imagine you mm -hmm. are only 17 mm -hmm. someone is breaking this mm -hmm. news to you mm -hmm. how did you take it okay let's say um first of all first of all when they came to me and they were like um did your reproductive organs were not there generally as a person you'll not believe it because growing up you know what is expected of a woman and all how yeah. a woman looks like okay. um, uh, because by the by then i was studying biology so i knew how a woman's our body looks, looks like, like yeah. so i knew what i should look like mm -hmm. so definitely after they say that definitely you will cry one two days but then again it's life. It's just life. to continue. When you said you went for the uh, you went uh, for the procedure at mm -hmm. 17, mm -hmm. that's when you went to find out what was wrong with you. Yeah. We women, we experience our periods mm -hmm. at an early stage. Uh, yeah. The majority of us, mm -hmm. probably 12, 13, mm -hmm. even 11 mm -hmm. nowadays, mm -hmm. when you used to see women mm -hmm. or girls around mm -hmm. you experiencing mm -hmm. their periods, mm -hmm. uh, what was going on with okay you? let's say growing up in the in the village you don't have so many information mm -hmm. so uh, at 17 i was still okay because uh, we have 
information that you have the late boomers yes. that do, the people that get their periods in late. the late days mm -hmm. so i was still okay and i was also not bothered yeah. since my mother was also not bothered about it yeah so i was not bothered about my oh. periods right. yeah. and now when you found out this mm -hmm. at what point in life did you completely become okay with your situation okay um i believe i became completely okay with my condition at 24 years mm -hmm. yeah because um after after discovering that i had an mrkh I, I had to go back to school and life had to continue mm -hmm. after high school there is a life and there is also what is expected of you as a person yeah. and also after that that's when you start planning your life yeah. so it hit back that I have a market hate and that's when I started doing my research mm -hmm. so to know what is really really happening yeah. and what condition is that mm -hmm. because in um, when they're describing your condition they will not say it's a market hate mm -hmm. they call it Moravian agenesis mm -hmm. yeah so definitely also, the doctors out there, they don't also understand what is a market. So people don't understand yes, this Yes, people condition. don't so really understand. Even the doctors out there, mm -hmm. yeah, they okay. don't. And as a young woman mm -hmm. growing, did you ever come across having a relationship? And what was the experience like? Okay, uh, having a relationship, I've, I've had relationships, but then again, um, I'm always open. I tell people my condition, mm -hmm. and it is your choice either to stay or walk away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, How people walked away. Yeah, people do walk away because uh, when someone is getting to, into a relationship, they have their own expectations, yes. and they expect something out of it, and then yeah. uh, you find out that maybe you can't offer what they want mm -hmm. and remember in a, we are in an african society yeah. so this someone is like i am getting to a relationship either to get married get kids or that and mm -hmm. then if you're not able to give that it will also be difficult for someone to stay yeah. and uh, I always say someone who wants to stay will stay and someone who wants to walk away will always walk away mm -hmm. no matter how long it takes. No matter how long yes. it takes. Yeah. When people walk away <laughs> as a young woman, mm -hmm. how do you deal with that emotionally? Okay, um, I think over the years you get used to it and uh, with my with, with the market, I guess I am always ready for anything mm -hmm. because uh, I don't want to try anybody to my life and then later they regret it. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Wow, you you're such a strong woman. You know, uh, it, it, you just have to be strong when, when there is nothing else you can do. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And then you had the surgery. Now, what was the surgery for? Okay. Uh, su the surgery was to create the vaginal canal. Um, when you're creating the vaginal canal, you're, on, you're not creating the vaginal canal so that you can be able to have babies, but you're creating the vaginal canal so that you can be able to have sex comfortably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I was ready for the surgery and I don't think I'm still yet ready for sex. Okay. So I always prepare myself for any step in my life. Yeah. Yeah. For first, I prepared to accept the condition. Mm -hmm. So after that, 10 years later, I prepared myself for surgery mm -hmm. and now I'll prepare myself for the next step. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you said uh, it, it does not allow you to have children. So does that mean when you have this condition, mm -hmm. you are unable to have children? Okay. Yes, when you have MRKH, you cannot have biological kids or you cannot ca mm -hmm. carry your kids. Mm -hmm. But then again, now uh, science has developed and you can be able to have your kids yeah. but through IVF which oh. is surrogacy mm -hmm. someone can carry kids for you mm -hmm. yeah what options for yourself what options are you okay, considering um, the, I think um, the only option that I am comfortable with mm. is adoption. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Mm. Yeah, and uh, definitely you'll make a great mom. That's th that's for sure. You will. And if so God me grants me the grace. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> and I know Julian. Many mm. women are watching you mm. right now, and they mm. have the same condition. Mm. You know, mm. what message would you like to send them, especially mm. those who think having this condition means they are outcasts okay first and foremost i want to say every stage in life has its own challenges mm -hmm. and uh, people out there are going through so much 
people with the market or any condition out there, they're going so, through so much because we as people out there or we as a society, we don't understand what they feel. We just say anything we want to say because uh, we have we have people in MRK who have been told that you have been bewitched. Either you are a witch. Maybe somebody was told that you have eaten your babies. That's why you cannot have babies because you are a witch. So people are really out there, but they don't want to come out because of the society. And society comes from us. The people around you are the society and, and the people who are going to make you feel like you are worthless. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, mm -hmm. love yourself. The society does not matter. And Julian, mm -hmm. what are some of the challenges people with this condition are facing out there? Okay, um, some of the challenges when we study the society mm -hmm. and how the society takes such conditions. And uh, you find out that uh, the society comes from us and the people around us, yes. the people who love us. They are the same, same people who at us because they know they don't know what to say and when to say it. Mm -hmm. So some people have gone through so much. I might not have gone through that, yeah. but people have been called witches. Mm -hmm. I've been told that they have, they have eaten their babies mm -hmm. and that's why they cannot have babies. Mm -hmm. Others have been told that you have aborted so much and that's why your uterus was removed. And um, some people have been married, they have been misused. So I guess there was someone who was married and she was she really suffered mm -hmm. for three years mm -hmm. and she was thrown away like a dog i can tell you that yeah. and she was painful and mrkh people can go through depression because we have what society expects of us mm -hmm. we have grown up that when you're done with school you get, get a married. job oh, yeah. get, get married, married get have kids, kids. Yeah. such and then uh, you find out if you cannot offer that now people view you as a bad person, mm -hmm. as someone who has committed so many crimes, or as they just take you in a bad way. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. so you find out, and then again, you also told maybe it is caused, maybe your parent did something. So you find out that their parents are going through so much because people say anything. Because I, I once had somebody say it's caused by, it can be caused by family planning. And I guess if it can be caused by fam family planning, each and every person out there will have a market. Yes. So people can be wicked, so they can say anything. Oh, yeah. But then again, it's life yeah. and they will always talk. Yeah. But always remember, we are not always the same. Julian is different from the next person with the marriage. We all take things differently. Yeah, and oh. some people have gone through depression. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just because people are throwing words carelessly, yeah, yeah, yeah. telling them things that yeah. they don't understand. Yes. Yeah, and I know many women are watching you right yes. now. And I know many families with people yes. also with the same condition yeah. are watching you. Mm -hmm. That one person who is watching mm -hmm. you and is feeling depressed, mm -hmm. what message would you like to send them? Okay, what I can say out there to the people out there is that you're beautiful. God loves you yeah. and he knows the reason why you are out there. Mm -hmm. Just believe in yourself, love yourself, mm -hmm. don't let the society dictate what happens in your life mm -hmm. because by the end of the day it's your life yeah. and not the society's life. Mm -hmm. it, life is beautiful, with or without kids you can be happy. You can be happy, yes. absolutely. And mm -hmm. earlier on, you mentioned mm -hmm. you have a group of people with yeah. the same condition yeah. that you sit down yeah. and discuss. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, how, how does that help someone? Okay, what happens with our group? We sit down, we talk, people cry. In that group, it's our home, you know, because no one will judge you then. Mm -hmm. They will listen to you. You can cry, you can laugh about it, mm -hmm. but by the end of the day, you get the support that you need because these people that you're with there, they have a market age and they feel your pain. So uh, everyone watching out there, be strong, fight for your happiness. Yes because you deserve it because you deserve it yes yes Meskia, fight for your happiness because you deserve it thank you so much guys for watching and thank you so much julian for taking your time You're welcome. i hope we all take time to be kind to one another and just don't utter words without understanding my name is lynn gogi till next time bye bye